We're here today to discuss one of the most important procedures carried out on any suckler farm, and that is calving the cow. In this section, we'll look at management of the cow before calving, the calving procedure itself, and management of both the cow and calf after calving. Preparation for ensuring you have a successful calving season starts at least two months before cows are due to calve. Having cows in the correct conditions for calving has been shown to significantly reduce calving difficulties. The ideal condition score for your autumn calving herd is 3, while the ideal condition score for the spring calving herd 2.5. Fire brigade tactics two to three weeks prior to calving is of no use. Starving over fat cows will simply increase health issues and have no impact on calving ease. Similarly, intensive feeding thin cows in the run-up to calving will only increase the amount of fat deposited around the birth canal and actually lead to an increase in calving difficulties. In essence, you will do more to ensure you have a successful calving season by feeding the cows correctly than you will ever do with a calving jack. There are three key areas you want to look at when assessing the body condition score of your cows. One, feeling along the loin, looking at the layer of fat here along the loin. Two, all over the rib cage here, feeling the layer of fat running over the ribs. And three, over the tail head. The tail head is probably the most visual. You can actually see the layer of fat on the tail head. This here cow here is probably slightly rich. She's a three, a good three, three and a half. You can see she has got a nice covering over the rib. You can't, like, there's no rib cage visible. She's got a good deep loin, a nice layer of fat in the loin, and she's got a good layer of fat over the top of the tail head. We're now in the calving pens and it's time to get down to business. As we know, the calving period is a stressful time for both man and beast, and therefore good, clean, hygienic calving facilities are essential. So, a few basic guidelines on calving pens. Firstly, how many pens do you need? As a rough rule of thumb, what you're looking for is to have one pen for every 15 cows calving in the herd. Secondly, calving pens should be one of the most hygienic areas on the farm and therefore should be designed in such a way that they can be cleaned out through large doors such as this one at the back and disinfectant between each calving. Thirdly, for some reason around the calving period, straw becomes sacred on many farms. Straw is one of the greatest tools you have in terms of preventing diseases such as pneumonia and scar and therefore should be used in copious amounts in the calving pens. Fourthly, calving processes a stressful period for the cow the cow sweats a lot and therefore needs fresh water. Each cabin pen should be fitted with a water truck around three foot off the ground to prevent any unfortunate accidents of newborn calves stumbling in. And finally, and most importantly, calving pens should never be used as sick bays on the farm. With labour now a premium on many suckler farms, it is essential that one person can easily handle and calve cows in a safe and efficient manner. This can easily be achieved by having good handling facilities in the calving pens. If we look at this simple design here, basically you've got the cow's head is trapped at the headstock at the front. This interlocking gate is then brought round and put along the side of the cow. The chain here then secures the gate. The cow is not only secured at the head, but she can also neither move from side to side. This allows you total access to the back of the cow when calving. The gate also serves as a, as a great aid in terms of getting young cows to suckle cows or when in the need of having to strike beastings from the cow. In the event of a cesarean section, the gate can be removed, brought back round and the vet having total access to the left hand side of the cow. It is essential that the access is gained through the left hand side of the cow as this is where 99.9% .9 of cesarean sections are carried out. There is no point in have the vet having access to the right hand side. In the event that the cow would go down during the calving process, this headstock can be easily released and this here gate opening, open round and allowing the cow full access to get back on her feet. Okay, so time to tool up for calving. It's important that you have a few essential things at hand prior to start of the calving season. Firstly, you're going to be examining cows, and it's essential that you have a box of full-length arm gloves at hand. This box of 100 gloves costs around 14 euros, looking at 14 cents a glove, and basically it provides vital protection to both the farmer and the cow. 
farmer, it prevents the contraction of diseases from the cow, from the cow to the farmer, and from a cow perspective, it's very hygienic, and it reduces the risk of infections that would affect fertility later on. Basically, before you put the hand in to examine the cow, it's essential that you use a lubrication. And where some farms, many farms use soap, very liquid and household products, that is certainly not advisable. You should use a veterinary lubricant. Household lubricants can, can irritate the cow. Basically, you want to apply the lubricant liberally. Remember, whenever it comes to jacking the cow, an ounce of lubrication is worth a ton of pressure. And when you insert your hand with the lubrication into the cow, you basically want to put the lubrication round the cervix of the cow and over the crown of the head. And this will certainly assist the calf and allow the calf to come much more freely from the, from the cow. Assuming everything goes according to plan and you get the cow calved, your work's not over then. And basically what you have is a calf with a, with a fresh navel. The navel basically acts as a sponge for uh, soaking up disease, so it's important that that navel is treated. And you have either really two options, basically using an aerosol spray to spray the navel, or an iodine solution where you can pour a certain level of iodine into a cup and immerse the navel in that. Now it's important that that's not only done at calving but repeat it for the first 12 hours after the cow calves because as we all know the cow will be licking the calf and certainly remove a certain amount of the treatment from the calf. In the event that, you want that the, cow, the cow does not have adequate levels of milk or you're not sure where or not the, the, cow, the calf has actually suckled the cow and we all know some cows nowadays it's very hard to go in and draw milk off. There are products available, colostrum substitutes such as this product here, which costs around 20 euros and basically it's diluted down in water and fed through a stomach tube uh, into, the, into the stomach. In the event that you have dehydrated calves, a box of lactates is also a vital tool. And again, whenever calves become dehydrated, hypothermia is also a problem and a heat lamp is also a very useful tool to have on the farm. The old faithful calving jack, Basically, on many farms, the calving jack is put away in, in May and not brought out to the, to the first calf is under pressure. You should look at the calving jack prior to calving, and it's always worth getting a new set of ropes, a new set of calving ropes prior to the calving. Don't be tempted to go to the workshop and use uh, the same rope as you use for tying gates or on, the, on the trailer. Basically, these ropes are specially designed that they don't cut into the wrist of the calf when there's pressure being added. And as you can see there, they're, they're, they're heavily padded. Just a little tip on terms of when you do buy new ropes, a lot of farmers tend to put the ropes very close to the top and that obviously restricts how big you can make your, make your loop and it can be quite cumbersome during the calving process. So actually make your knot towards the end and uh, th that's where that's going to attach to the calving jack so it gives you much greater flexibility and it also makes sure that you can get the rope far enough up the leg of the calf. A big problem is a lot of farmers put the rope just under the, over the fetlock of the calf, that's cutting into the joint the further you can get the rope up the leg of the calf, the better, and the less damage it's going to do. The last eight weeks of pregnancy is the key period for mineral supplementation. The key minerals during this period are copper, iodine, and selenium. Deficiencies in these minerals can result in weak calves at birth, cows retaining placenta, overall poor fertility, and increased incidence of calf scar. To avoid running into these problems, you should be feeding 100 grams of a good quality dry cow mineral per head per day. This can either be mixed in along with a ration, or can be fed over the top of the silage morning and night. In the case of the spring calving herd, getting the cow a newborn calf out the grass as quickly as possible significantly reduces the disease risk. While getting freshly calved cows and calves out the grass early in the spring certainly reduces diseases such as scar and pneumonia, it does increase the risk of grass tetany. Grass tetany is basically brought about by acute deficiency of magnesium in the blood, and as cows cannot store magnesium, they therefore require a constant intake. With magnesium levels in the grass highest in the stem and lowest in the leaf, cows grazing young lush spring grass therefore require additional supplementation. This can either be provided by feeding a high magnesium dairy ration at a rate of 1 to 2 kilos per day or feeding around 30 grams of magnesium mixed into a standard ration.